companies are struggling to find workers. The labor shortages are, are acute. It really is a crisis. You've probably heard a lot about how the pandemic has various industries dealing with the same problem, filling jobs. And one occupation that's been hit really hard? School bus drivers. There's such a severe shortage of them that in some places... A military escort of sorts for school children heading home in Massachusetts. Members of the National Guard are driving kids to class. So what's causing the shortage? And more importantly, how are families getting kids to school when that yellow bus isn't showing up? I made calls to people across the country to find answers to this important question. Good morning! Welcome to to School! Now, bus driver shortages are nothing new. School officials I talked to say that they've been an issue for years. But they say this is the worst they've seen it in decades, and it's primarily because of the pandemic. A recent nationwide survey found that more than half of the roughly 1,500 school transportation professionals who responded described their driver shortage as severe or desperate. Transportation officials tell me that many drivers have quit because they're worried about getting the virus, while others have left because they don't want to comply with mask or vaccine mandates. And like many Americans, some have just left for higher paying jobs. And the drivers that have stuck around, they're following the same rules that the rest of us are. They're calling out sick when they have symptoms, and they're quarantining when they've been exposed to the virus. And all of these pandemic-driven issues are forcing last-minute cancellations that are leaving parents scrambling. Portland Public Schools is canceling about a dozen bus routes. Fayette County Schools sent out an email announcing it would be canceling four bus routes for Thursday morning. So when the buses don't run, how are kids getting to class? Because education is primarily a state and local issue here in the U.S., every school, school district, and state is dealing with the driver shortage in different ways. And some have had to get creative. In Massachusetts, the governor has enlisted the help of the National Guard. Yeah, that National Guard. The military force that's made up of citizen soldiers who are usually called in for things like emergencies and natural disasters. The National Guard has been activated to help address the pandemic over the past year and a half and now its members are taking kids to school. They're being trained to drive these vans, known as 7D vehicles, while schools iron out their driver issues. Governor Charlie Baker's order makes up to 250 guard members available for the mission. I don't know what it's cost at this point, but I can tell you that, uh, like many other things associated with COVID, um, this back to school stuff will be reimbursed by the feds. The governor's order has no specified end date and some school officials in other states are calling on their governors to enlist the National Guard as well. Of course, in many places, parents are taking time out of their work schedules to help drive carpool. And one Band-Aid that's aimed at helping them? Stipends. Where buses aren't running, CPS has offered uh, financial compensation to parents to make sure uh, that they have an opportunity to pay for transportation. In Chicago, the public school district is giving affected families $500 a month to get their kids to class. And some schools and districts across the country are making similar efforts. At Eastside Charter School, we are offering every student $700 to get to and from school. If we did not have the stipend, I am certain we would not be able to have children come to school. And then there are families taking matters into their own hands, turning to apps and private services to drive their kids to class. The founder of Ruby Rides, a membership-based ride service for families, says demand for school trips has risen about 60%, and the company has had to start a wait list. The demand that we have is surpassing the drivers that we have, so we are really working around the clock to continuously onboard drivers so that we can fulfill that large demand. These services can be a good alternative to Uber and Lyft, which have rules against transporting minors, but they're costing parents a pretty penny. The private companies I talk to charge anywhere from $20 to $85 or more per round trip per day. So let's pick a number. Let's say a round trip costs 60 bucks a day, times five days, that's $300 a week, times 35 weeks in a school year, that's more than $10,000 a school year per kid. As families scramble to find rides right now, transportation officials remain focused on getting more yellow buses back in action. Some districts are boosting hourly wages and dangling bonuses as high as $4,000. Others are trying to recruit former police officers, firefighters, and other drivers who have the necessary commercial driver's license to drive buses. 
And some are even encouraging teachers to add driving as a side hustle. After all, their schedules are a perfect fit. But until they hire more drivers, current drivers are often running double routes to pick up more students. And that means a lot of kids are spending more time at school than usual. Thankfully, I live within walking distance of my daughter's school. But for those who need rides, these temporary solutions may need to stay in place until around Thanksgiving, since it can take two months to get a new driver licensed and behind the wheel. So have you or someone you know been affected by the bus driver shortage? Drop me a line in the comments and let me know how you're dealing with it. And if you like this video, please hit subscribe so you can join me as I cover more news that's having an impact on our lives.